Mickey Van, welcome to xboxers.com, remembering the good old days, how are you? I'm great, thanks, yeah, superb. So, so it's been nice to come and see you Mickey, because I haven't seen you for a long time. Good to see you. Yeah, you are refereeing abroad, but not in Britain anymore, are you? Uh, not in, I haven't refed in Britain since, oh, for the last nine years. Nine years. Yeah. Um, but I, I was licensed by, by the Boxing Union of Ireland and so that allowed me to, to referee abroad or in Ireland, in Southern Ireland or abroad. So uh, I, just, I just kept going. What we'll do, we'll go back because what people, some people won't know is that you used to box. You did have about 14 pro fights. Yeah, lost nine. <laughs> But it doesn't matter what I won or what I lost, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. I was an amateur fighter in, in, in uh, I had my first amateur fight in 1956. Wow. Um, and, uh, and then I had my first pro fight in 68 or 69. And then I refereed my first pro, pro fight in Manchester in 1976. Did you go straight from being a fighter to being a referee? No, no. What made I, you want to be a referee after the fight then? <laughs> I'll tell you a story on that. I, when I retired, I mean, I was, I was, I don't know, about 29 years old. And, um, and I, I'd been retired and, and you didn't have to train. And I did a bit of ducking and diving with cars and, and a little greengrocer's business and selling stuff out of the back of a van and all the rest of it. And, and I missed the game. And so Tommy Miller was my manager, so I went to see Tommy. And, um, and I said, Tommy, I'd, I, I'm missing the game. Um, can I come and help you training, you know, and coaching uh, the, the fighters? And Tommy said, um, Mickey, what the hell could you teach anybody what to do in boxing? So I said, well, I can help you and learn. And he said, no, he said, listen, he said, there's only two referees in the central area. He said, why don't you become a, try and become a referee? He said, they're crying out for them. Um, and that's how I started. And what I did, I went in front of uh, of the um, of the central area committee. In uh, they used to hold the meetings in Bellevue, in Manchester. Mm. And I went this one Sunday, and there's all these about 19 members, I think there was something like that. And when I went in, this boy, because you go for an interview, and then to see if you know the rules of boxing, or if you know the basics or whatever first, um, and to see what sort of a person I suppose you are. And this voice from one of our managers there said, um, um, Bernie Nichols is looking for you. Well, I fought Bernie um, a couple of times, and um, I beat him in Manchester, he's a lad in Manchester. I'd love to know where he is now, I'd love to see him again. And, uh, and I beat him with a cut eye and I went in the dressing room to see him, to see if we were all right, and he was getting his eyes sewn up. And I went, are you all right, Bernie? Uh, Bernie? And, uh, and he went, you dirty bastard. <laughs> and I went, whoa, <laughs> I'm off. <laughs> so I went out. Anyway, I, um, so they, they fire the questions at you and, and what have you and ask about what your job is and all the rest of it. And then I got through that and then they told me I had to go, they sent me a list of shows and I had to turn up at these shows and they would sit me somewhere and I'd have a scorecard and then I would score the fights, tear them off, give them to the inspector and he would... Um, put them with the, the, the referee that is worked the fight and then they would put your, put your two scores, not just your scores but your rounds. Yeah. You know, you might have the same score but you have different rounds yeah. winning. So just to see that you're on the, you know, you're on the same level as the, as the uh, referee. 
I remember one time, I did a couple of times, I did, um, I did a show for Johnny Griffin and, uh, and the bastard, he made me pay. I had to pay to go in and then he'd sit me six or seven rows back. Well, did, you claw it, did you claw it back though when you went for your money afterwards? Though? <laughs> you don't get paid. Don't get paid. No? No, you do it for nothing. Let me know. If you want to be a referee, that's it. That's what you did. Uh, well, I don't know what, what, you know what it's like now. But yeah. that's part of your learning process. That's right. part of, do you want to be a referee enough yeah. to, to turn up, pay your own way, and get nothing for it, give your scorecards, not even get in the ring, and then do. I'm sure you'd have got it back off Johnny Griffin, no. though. As <laughs> <went> on. <laughs> but get... um, you went on then, really, to become one of, well, the best referee in Britain, refereeing some top fights. I should think your top one would have been Lewis Bruno, yeah, was it? Been Lewis and That's Bruno. got to be that one, hasn't it? That's, yeah. That was history. Yeah. You know, the first time that two two British fighters had ever fought for the World Heavyweight Championship. Was you nervous? Um, you're always nervous. Whenever you, I mean, I was nervous last week in Italy. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you you're always nervous. Otherwise, there's there's something going wrong. You know, the adrenaline's got to be going. Yeah. Um, one thing I was a little bit pissed off with on that was... Um, it was raining. I don't bother about that. You know, I was in short sleeves and I was yeah. sweating. But the board made me referee the chief support as well. Oh, yeah. Who was the chief support? That was... Um, you'll have to look that up. That was a guy from Bristol, I think he was. It was, a, it was the chief support, wasn't much of a support, in a, I mean, no disrespect to them. You know, that's great. It was a fine eliminator for the British title. Won a British championship yeah. role. But, uh, and it was raining in the, on that as well. Yeah. And we had the cover on the yeah. green, but of course the wind blew, the, blew it in, you yeah. were getting wet. Got out of the ring, uh, I can't remember whether it went the distance or not, but I got out of the ring and I had to run to the uh, dressing room and get changed again to put my green shirt on for the, the big World fight, yeah. Camp, for the big fight and get myself psyched up, or not as he's psyched up, but get myself ready and, and, and in the right frame of mind. Exactly, not leaving you much time that really, was no. it? I mean, no. So, um, but you've, re you've refereed hundreds and hundreds of bouts, so I've got oh, to ask okay. you this. Um, I won't say your top three fighters that you used to hate refereeing. Well, I can't remember three, I can remember two. And one of them was, was, was in, they both know who they are, was Glyn Rhodes <laughs> from Sheffield, MBE as well. Yeah. And I don't know what it stands for, MBE, but, it, it, <laughs> but God, he, he was a nightmare. But such a talented fighter. Yeah. But he, he was. just, he didn't. And he told me later that he didn't train uh, as well as he should have done. Shame. Uh, yeah, but he won't. I mean, he's a great coach now, and yeah. he's, he's he's got a great stable and what have you, um, and uh, and realizes, you know, that he, he that he made a mistake. You can't turn the clock. Back. That's a shame. Was he just hard work from from round one? Uh, just he talked to you and and. and just get behind you and hold and look at you and, and get on with it, Glenn, will you? And any good combinations, then he grab hold of them and have a rest. And, and, and I used to say, you should have trained out of the sun. Come on. That's where you got off. the name from, Showboat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, dear. But, yeah. And the other one was um, the lad from Liverpool. Um, he's just retired. God, I've forgotten his name again. Matthew Derry. Derry, Derry, Matthews, Derry Matthews. That's it. Derry Matthews. And what? A, now he had a he's a funny, a funny career really because he he was a WBU champion. That wasn't a bad. There were some good WBU champions. Yeah. Bloody good ones. And he was a WBU champion, but he was a nightmare. He just he was so close to being thrown out of the ring on many occasions. He just took no notice of you. And, and I don't know what it was, he just had this th thing about, and he wouldn't fight. 
you know, he, he just messed about and, and got, just did enough to win yeah. a fight. And then I remember him fighting. I think the turn for me was I remember, I think I was a judge on the fight or I was a judge on the show or referee on the show, I can't remember. But he fought, he fought um, the, the, the guy um, from, oh God, the, the um, uh, like, like, he's not a Russian, um, Therese Peeve or, or Therese Peeve. He was a WBU champion as well. Um, Mongolian. Right, I don't know his name. Oh, Choi. Choi! That's oh, it. Oh, yeah. And Choi beat the shit out of him. Absolutely, I couldn't believe it. Good fighter, Choi. Choi, a very good fighter, yeah. Um, that's Dave Hall, by the way, that's talking in the background. He's my prompt. <laughs> uh, and, and beat the shit out of him. And I don't know whether Derry went home and thought, I need to do, if I want to carry on, I need to do something or different. what. But he came back. A, different fighter. A totally different fighter. I mean, I can remember, and what a nice kid. Yeah. And I can remember, I mean, I mean his dad's lovely and all. But I remember him with Crowler and, 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 and he had so many cracking fights. The fights. Though. Value for money. He was one of these where you knew, like the, like, um, the, the, the other welterweight from, from, uh, that you mentioned earlier, Shane Neary. from Shane Neary. When you went to see Shane Neary, you were going to see a fight. fight yeah. You were going to see what you paid your bloody good money for. Who, who did you and like to Dave, share the ring with then? Who was the one you, it's a pleasure to be in the ring with him to referee him? The, the, funny enough, the one, the nicest one, the and the easiest, to, the absolute easiest to referee, and he was at the Leeds Xboxers last week with John Celebanski, and it was uh, John Doherty. Yeah. Or oh, I think his proper name was Pat Doherty, I believe, but there were two of them. There was, yeah. At the same time, one of them down in London. Yeah, Pat Doherty at Croydon. Yeah. And, uh, and there was uh, Pat from Bradford, but he, he changed his name to, yeah. or he fought under John. Because I did John Doherty, his, I think it was his pro debut, and it was at the Astoria in Leeds. And Tom Collins was topping a bill against, I think it was, was it Catoose, Ray Catoose, I think. And John, um, um, yeah, yeah, he, did. he made his... Um, made his debut there and I stopped the fight and I think it was the second or third round and it was a bad cut and people were saying to I went to his dressing room after and it was his pro debut yeah. and I the time that it was in that I'd seen him in the in the I thought what a good fighter he is I don't know whether it's an accidental clash of heads or what it was but I thought I hope he don't give up and I went in to see him and I and people have been saying, oh, you know, he ain't any good, and what? That's, you know, second round, third round, whatever it was. And I and I said to him, John, you know, you're a cracking little fighter. It's it's bad luck, you know. You should carry on. I wish I had half your talent, and yeah. things like that, that sort of thing. You know, put me arm around and sort of thing. Don't take it to heart. And and that's it. Off I went, and I refereed him. I believe a couple of times after, but I was on the show when he won, I think it was in Preston, when he won the British title. And I was so, it was, and I was so pleased for him. And I thought, yeah, you know, you're stuck at it, you're trained, and he was never any trouble. Well, I'm going to put you on the spot this question, because I don't know if you've been asked this one before. Your um, understudy at the time, Howard Foster, lovely oh, bloke. Lovely bloke. You've been watching the fight, Mm. with Groves and Froch, the first one. Yeah. Now, he got a lot of stick for stopping that fight. He was dead right. Would you, would you, would you have done exactly oh, the same? Yeah, the same. and I said to people yeah. after, what are you doing? He's there, he's in the ring. Yeah. He can see exactly what's going on. And if I, my mind recalls, I believe that, that um, he... Uh, 
Groves gave an interview or something a fair while after and said that, yeah, he was he was concussed or something. Yeah, because he got a lot of grief, did um, Yeah, well, well that's what him. you do, you get a lot. Just because, you know, those guys that three or four rows back, even one row, they can't yeah, see what's exact, going on. Yeah. They, they don't know what's going on. I did a fight uh, years ago, and I'm... I think it was a bantamweight fight, a Liverpool kid and an Irish kid, both unbeaten. And you'd have to look this one up. Oh, and it was a, a cracking fight. And they got it, they were in the corner, and bang! One of them got a, got a cracking shot, and his eyes went, it did, I lost his eyeballs. And then he just stood there, and I jumped in. That was it. And his corner would go, oh, the same sort of thing that the other fighter, I don't know whether it's a Liverpool fighter or the Irish fighter, was giving it big licks, and he was saying, well, what's the matter with your ref or something? You know, well, oh, I'm all right, I'm all right. And I went, and I stepped away, I remember him in the corner, and I stepped away from him like that, and he went like that and fell over. And I just grabbed him as he fell over. Yeah. And that's it. Nobody said anything else about it. And the same thing, it was early enough. Could have taken another... I'm not going to say he would have taken another punch, or, but I stopped him getting another punch. He lives to fight another day. Yeah. The same as Groves. Yeah, exactly. Groves should be very, very pleased about that because he went on to fight in front of 80,000 people, get a good old payday. Exactly. A lot of dough, they were all winners. Everybody were a winner. Yeah. He was a winner, got a lot of dough. Frotch was a winner, got a return. He was always going to beat him again anyway. And then he earned a winner. Got, a, got a winner. The referees and judges all got a winner. The only person, the only person who wanted to win was poor old Howard. He got poor his car Howard, smashed yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so when did you be the last competitive um, referee in uh, the... Last week. In no, in Britain. Oh, in Britain. Do you know, it was... I'll tell you where it was. He's going to tell me I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> that's Dave Hall, by the way. Uh, <laughs> he knows everything. It was at the Reebok Stadium. Lovely little show. On a Sunday, I believe it was. I think it was... Was it for... Steve no, was Wood. For, for Steve Wood. That's it. I was thinking for Foster, but it wasn't. It was for Steve Wood, yeah. It was a lovely little show. Um, got a nice book and what have you. I had a fantastic time. Would it be Jolly Boys one? Jolly Boys, that was it, yeah. yeah and then Jolly that was your last. That was your last competitive show. Show, the, yeah. And it you went. Really, you go all over the world doing it now, and still doing it. I still. Well, I, I retired, and I did my last show in in Dublin, at the National Stadium. Uh, in, I think it was November, end of November or beginning of December, and I said, that's it. And my sons came over, uh, my wife came with me, and we had a, I mean, I don't drink, but we went to bed around about half four or five o'clock in the morning. A fantastic time. And that's it, I retired. And, and, I, and I, people have said, I mean, I'm 75 next year, in the next year. But... And, I, and I, can, I can do it. You can do it, don't. I, I, did, I did a show last week. I was asked by the IBF to do a, would I do a show in Siena, uh, about two and a half hours, two hours from uh, Pisa. So I said, I've retired. Yeah, you know, I said, I retired last, in December. They said, yeah, but they want you to do this show. Uh, would you referee? It's a 12 rounder for the, the, uh, an IBF. Uh, uh, title, I don't know which one, super middle, I think it was, or light middle. And um, and I said, well, they said, well, they would like you to do it. So I said, all right, I'll, I'll do it. Um, and I, I did it all right, no problems or anything. But it's all right, I said, and I might go, next, might go next week to France or to somewhere else mm. and do a good show. But I'm going to... My, my reflexes are not going to be as good as I get older. I mean, I've slowed down a bit now. And, 
and put a bit of weight on. And I'm going to make a mistake. And at the moment, as far as I'm aware, I've got a pretty good reputation as a, yeah. as a referee. I ain't in the Hall of Fame or nothing daft like that. Well, not daft, but nothing like that. Referees don't get in there. But but I've 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 been I've been in in boxing since 1956, and say referee, amateur fighter, pro fighter, had a fantastic time, and I'm, if I make a mistake, I'm going to be remembered as that silly old bastard that went on too long, and it only takes one. One mistake to do that, and I don't want to go out like that. My dad, he has always said to me, and I heard, I heard him. He always used to say, "People that listen at doors don't hear good at themselves." And I was listening at a door one time, and I heard him telling me, Uncle Tom, because I used to be work the fairgrounds as a kid. Yeah. You know, this I was fourteen then, and I heard him telling me, Uncle Tom, now you don't want, you don't want our Michael because. Uh, He's a waste of space, never make anything of himself. So, and I thought, I have made something of myself. I mean, my dad was very, very well known in, in America. He was on $1,000 a week in the 40s and 50s. He earning a lot of dough. I've got stuff to prove it, sort of thing. And, and I thought, yeah, if, if he's up there looking down, he, yeah, I have made something of myself. But what I didn't know, was when he died, I went through his belongings and he'd kept cuttings of when I was an amateur fighter, a pro fighter, a referee, he had so many, you know. Um, so I put it down to him that that's, yeah. that's why I did it and that's why I, 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 I want to finish like I did. I'll tell you a story. I, I say a couple of weeks ago, they asked me to go, because this is how things change to go to Siena, a couple of, a couple of hours out of Pisa. And the day before, now you've got, when, you, when you're a referee or whatever, you've got to prepare properly. And the day before, right, I'm, I'm, I'm going in the more early hours. I was going at two o'clock in the morning, the following morning. I thought, wow, I, I had specially made, under a pound a pair, when I got to a star grade referee, these three sets of trousers made. And they used to have a waistband Round there, but all sewn. They used to people used to think it were one of these comma comma band, but it was sewn to it. And I used to have it, I used to have it embroidered at the back. And it had one had three lions on and England Mickey Van, and the other had the world on Mickey Van, and the other one I forget what that's got the world and somewhere else on. So I thought, which one shall I wear? So I pulled the England one up there with a bit, pulled it, they wouldn't fit me. I couldn't tighten them up, and I'd only finished for last December, so I had to dash up to York and go and buy a pair of black trousers. <laughs> to, and, I'd put, and that's how things change. Yeah. <clears throat> change from December to now to what is it? March. They've changed, yeah. and that's how things. I can. I can. All of a sudden. I mean, I've got osteoarthritis in me foot, my knee, and my hand, as you can see. And I'm going to slow, slow, I do slow down. I mean, I train four times a week in the You're gym. still looking fit, though. Look nimble. I'm reasonable, yeah, I'm all right. Do you still keep in touch with any of the boxing fraternity, any of the fighters? Um, I never kept in touch with any it's of them. It's a shame, because it's, it's as though you're finished with, in Britain, but then you've gone all over the world refereeing and what have you. It's like... Did they not? It's like, it's like you go, you go, you work for a, a firm, we'll say, for fifty years, and they give you a gold watch. Yeah. Yeah, you've you've done marvelous. Goodbye. Thank you. That's, that's, that's point, it. Yeah. You know, that's I fun. I take no I'm archery. Just to, to, I mean, I took up rugby league and what I played uh, veteran rugby league and what up until I was. It's changed a lot, hasn't it? Now the box, the boxing scene. I think it's changed it's, a lot. It's changed. It's not changed for the better. I don't think. In what way? How would you say? Well, I think we were tougher. Then, yeah. Um, we didn't, I mean, nowadays, you you have, we when we fought, we got weighed in, one o'clock, the day of the fight, right? That was it. Now, you get weighed in the day before, 
you yeah. can weigh whatever you can make just make the weight on the scales and then that's it you don't fight for what is it 36 hours yeah you bundle it, and this is supposed to be safe and you can come in another stone overweight true, true. you know that's not safe what can you put on in weight from one o'clock in the afternoon when you've made the scales and for until say seven hours later, eight o'clock at night, when you're getting in the ring. And if you have put that much weight in, you ain't going to be very fast. No. Not many characters in the game now, are there? No. No. There's, you know, when you look, you look at the, at the uh, well, Naz, but you, you, and you look at your banks, you know, what no. character. You're Nigel Ben. You know, there's Frank Bruno. They, they were, they were characters. But they could fight as well. Yeah. You know, there was, you didn't want to see, when, when we had a fight, that we, a lot of the time we didn't know, Tommy, it, oh, I don't know who it is, he's all right, don't worry, there, there'll be no problems. You know, you didn't know it while you were fighting. You didn't care what you're getting about, how much dough you were getting. You yeah. know, I'm a, well, I, I, I remember fighting Billy Wayth down in, what they did, um, I never had a phone, I lived in Farsley and a nice bungalow and uh, I didn't have a phone and one Sunday morning the police knocked me on my door waking me up one o'clock in the bloody morning so I went down so I couldn't send the wife down she wouldn't go <laughs> and I went down there's a police at the door because I used to get I, I used to get, do a bit of car dealing and a bit of this and them inching about and I thought oh bloody hell what have I done now so, because they came for me one time, because they hadn't paid a five pound fine. And my <laughs> wife always said afterwards, I wish I'd have let them take you away instead of paying that fine. <laughs> but still. <coughs> so, he said, can you go to the village, I lived in Farsley, and ring your manager? So I go to the phone, get some coins, and go to the phone, phone box down in the village. Ring Tommy. So he said, you're fighting in... in um, in, in Wales, in Aberavon. Uh, and I said, who am I fighting? He said, oh, I don't know, he's some, somebody. It, it'll be all right, no problem, right? So he said, but you've got to get the six o'clock train in the morning from the city station and you tr change here. I had three changes. Oh, man. And I got to uh, Aberavon, but, the, but the, the fight was in Port Tolbert, oh, but the train only took you to Aberavon. And then a guy picked me up, four o'clock in the afternoon, I've been travelling all that time, and then took me, and, and, and I said, who oh, am I fighting? And he said, didn't tell, Tommy tell you? I said, no. He said, Billy Wave. I said, oh, fucking hell. He boxed for Wales and all sorts. I said, oh, all right. So, goes there. <coughs> so they, they're at, the last train back was nine o'clock. From Aberavon, from Port, to from Aberavon. So, and I was in Port Talbot, or vice versa. I can't remember which which way it goes round. One of them, the train goes to. So I said to him, uh, and Colin Miles was fighting Maguire, I think it was, top of the bill, and uh, British title or uh, um, or uh, uh, eliminator or something like that. So I said to, uh, I think King, the promoter was. Reg King. Reg King, I think it was Reg King, lovely fella. And um, because I, I fought Billy Wade because Williams, can you, Mac Williams was Billy Wade's manager. Mac Williams was in my corner when I fought Freddie Williams in, uh, in Not in a Mice Ring. And he must have thought, oh, this is an easy touch. You know, I'll stick him in with. Uh, I'll stick him in with um, Billy Waith. So that's how I got the fight, which was a nice little payday. So um, I go, I said, can you put me on first? Because I've got to get the train back. I've got to go to work in the morning. So they said, right, I'll put you on first. So lovely, put me on first. And I'm, I fought the best I'd ever fought. I think it were on Grandstand when he had Grandstand yeah. in, in the afternoon, you know, Saturday. And uh, and I, the only reason I fought that well was I wanted to take him out and get the train. 
get back. And get back. We had a, and only one one round. The referee was Adrian Morgan. And Ad I was a star grade referee before Adrian. No. <coughs> and I threw me. And I always used to say to Adrian, you cheating bastard. You only gave me one round, I outboxed him. I did, you know, nobody outboxed him. Uh, well, the first guy to beat him, by the way, was at Leeds Town Hall, was my stable mate, was Dave Toohey. First lad to beat him, beat him on points. Do you miss it? Do I miss it? I wish I could still fight. Yeah. Yeah, I, I miss the fighting part. Would you rather, do you miss the fighting more, or do you miss the refereeing more in Britain? Uh, I miss referee in Britain, in Britain because because I don't see the people yeah. uh, and the referees that we had a good a good rapport with you know yeah. and 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 the managers and uh, I mean I've seen the odd ones over in Ireland when they bring them over in well, Ireland across, you know. yeah but um, now do you not see much of your own understudy Howard. I don't I ring him and he rings me yeah and we talk and and. Got his feet on the ground, you know, it'll never be, I don't think it'll ever be any different. Howard is Howard, and he'll be, he'll be the nice guy, always. You know, I've never seen him lose his temper or anything like that, and he'll do anything for you, you know, and, and he just, just pops along, gets in that ring, does a good job, does a great job anyway, put a bit of weight on Howard, do you want to get some of that off, old son? <laughs> and and that's it, you know, and it's lovely. lovely that's the thing, with, I mean, even saying with your referees, obviously, once you finish your boxing career that, and your refereeing career, that's it, nobody's interested, are they? No, they're not. That's the only problem not. with this, that's this game. It's the only problem with yeah. this game. It's so nice to, to have ex-boxers. Yeah. yeah. You know. You find out full stops are as well, you know. Oh, that's true, yeah. That's it, yeah. You know, or you look on, because um, I, I get a lot of fights from the IBF, WBO, and that, you get it on emails. You know, there's no yeah. emails now. <laughs> you know, all that sort of thing. Um, I have got something in the pipeline, which I'm not going to say because it might not mat materialise. Uh, they'll let me know probably in the next two or three weeks. Um, if it is, I'll let you know. Good. But, um, but if not, as I said, I've, I've just, I, well, a, a, a couple of months, two or three months ago, I passed my first, my first course as an archer. So I do archery now. Um, I watch out for your Robin Hood films. That's yeah, it then. The kids <laughs> won't, won't hold the apples. And, 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 and so I'm having to hit a target at the moment. But, and the wife, she, she doesn't go anywhere near them. Well, it's been nice to um, catch up with you, Mickey, because like I say, you, great, you, yeah. you was the main referee back in the day, so... So they say, I'm not going <laughs> to... But so I'm sure that a lot of people are going to um, enjoy this, but um, just want to say, Mickey, thanks a lot. Hey, thanks for coming and talking. No well, worries. No, you didn't do much, I did it all. <laughs> no, I don't mind. <laughs> don't mind listening to you. Right, Mickey, thanks a lot. My pleasure.